Hey guys, my name is Noah and today I'm going to be explaining why you should ditch H.264 and switch to H.265 on your Sony A7S III. If you're a Sony A7S III owner, you've probably noticed but never used the XAVC HS format, otherwise known as H.265, because it's so incredibly difficult for your computer to play smoothly. Or is it? I've done a lot of testing with my 2017 MacBook Pro, which is by no means a super speedy computer by today's standards. And I've come to the conclusion that H.265 in my workflow is better in every way than the popular XAVC-S codec, also known as H.264. If you are looking for the absolute best quality out of the A7S III, you should record in all eye or record externally. However, for most people, the file size and cost of compatible recording media is unrealistic. But about the H.264 to H.265 comparison, you might be asking, what about editing performance? And yes, even in that regard, I've found that H.265 is at least as good, and in my specific editing workflow, better than H.264. Let me explain. If you compare the top bitrate options available for H.265 and H.264, which are both 100 megabits per second in 24p, then yes, H.264 is much easier for computers to edit than H.265. However, this is somewhat of an apples to oranges comparison, because H.265 is a newer, more efficient codec, it can compress footage to about half the file size as H.264 while still maintaining roughly the same quality. So we really should be comparing H.264 at 100 megabits per second to H.265 at 50 megabits per second. This will give us approximately the same quality of video in each format. In my tests, I found that H.265 at 50 megabits per second plays back with almost the exact same performance as H.264 at 100 megabits per second. Therefore, I see no viable reason for someone to choose H.264 over H.265 if you are using an option with half the bitrate in H.265, which will give you comparable quality to the H.264 codec. It might seem shocking to you that H.265 at the same level of quality as H.264 is just as easy for a computer to edit. This is because there's a lot of misinformation out there about what makes long gop footage hard for computers to play. Yes, it is true that the method of compression H.265 uses is more difficult for computers to unpack or interpret than the H.264 method, and that is why when you compare equal bit rates of each codec, H.264 will always be easier to edit. However, another very important factor for the playback performance of long gop footage is bit rate. The more bits per second, the more data the computer has to process in order to display each frame. That is why the A7S III offers H.265 proxies in camera that still edit super smoothly, because the bit rate for those proxies is only 9 megabits per second. If you're still confused, think of it this way. If you have a row of paper clips spread out in front of you and you need to figure out the color of every fifth paper clip, you'll be able to give me an answer much quicker if there are only 10 paper clips in front of you rather than 100. In the same way that you can only count so fast, a computer can only process a certain amount of data per second. To sum it up, Low bitrate footage is easier to play than higher bitrate footage, though the method of compression like H.265 or H.264 is also a factor in playback performance. If we take the example of my tests with my MacBook Pro, we can conclude that the lower bitrate of H.265 balances the performance gains of the easier to decode yet higher bitrate H.264 footage. So now that we know we can use a lower bitrate in H.265 to get the same quality and that it edits at roughly the same speed as H.264, I think we've already settled the argument between the two codecs. However, I'd like to take it one step further to prove why everyone should be using H.265 with the Sony A7S III. If you're looking to get the best quality without breaking the bank on hard drives and recording media for all eye, H.265 on the A7S III offers the best quality you can get from the camera without recording gigantic files in the all eye format or recording externally. Since H.265 is about twice as efficient as H.264, then theoretically recording an H.265 at 100 megabits per second in 24p would be the equivalent of recording an H.264 at 200 megabits per second in 24p, an option that the A7S III does not offer. But as I mentioned before, at 100 megabits per second, H.265 becomes a pain for most computers to edit. That is where the internal proxy recording option on the A7S III comes in handy. You can record a 9 megabits per second 10-bit proxy at the same time as your full quality H.265 file. This will make editing super fast on almost any computer, and you have no time lost waiting for your computer to transcode since the camera does it in real time as you record. And since it's a 10-bit proxy, your image won't completely fall apart when you play back the footage after applying a color grade. Sure, it won't look perfect while you're editing, 
there are bound to be some compression artifacts and you are limited to 420 chroma subsampling with the proxy. But it will be far easier to edit than even full quality H.264 and your final result will be higher quality once you switch over to the high quality media to export. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said that H.265 performs better in my specific editing workflow. Even with the proxies, my total file size is still only about 60% as large as the comparable H.264 recording option. I use internal proxy recording on the A7S III almost always. Like I said before, my MacBook is aging and far from being a super fast computer, so even in H.264 at 100 megabits per second, once I've filled out the timeline and done some color grading and maybe a multicam, it will not play back smoothly. This only gets worse when I start working with 60p and 120p footage. So for people like me, who don't want to spend a ton of money on the newest and fastest computers and massive hard drives, the internal proxy option on the Sony a7S III provides an almost seamless editing experience while keeping file sizes small and offering us higher quality if we want it. If you'd like me to make a video showing you how to incorporate camera generated proxies into your editing workflow, let me know in the comments. If you appreciated this video and you would like to see more useful videography content in the future, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. As always, thank you for watching.